Hi everyone, welcome to Kiki and Kibbets. It's Mary, and I am here today with a special recap, and I have some reflections about this. I binge watch Netflix's documentary, The Man with a Thousand Kids. And yes, Kyle Gordy and his buddies are mentioned in the documentary. It's not solely about Kyle, no matter what he's trying to say on Reddit. So I decided to binge watch this on Netflix. It is three episodes and the story sounds also familiar from my research about Kyle Gordy. Um, these women, they pretty much went through the same thing, but on a different level. So this documentary is about a man named Jonathan Jacob Maher. And he is from the, the Netherlands, okay? And that's where he originally started with his sperm donation. And the documentary starts off with the stories of couples, single women, a married couple, just various people who were all at the point in their lives that they wanted to have a child, perhaps more than one. And as you see here, Jonathan with one of his many children, his profile fit the bill. Like Kyle, he was a member of a um, international sperm donor group, okay? And like I said, Kyle was mentioned um, in the third episode of this series, and I'm going to get into that more in a minute. So um, it started off with a lesbian couple. Give me one second. Let me just look up what their names are. Suzanne and Natalie, who talked about how desperate they were to have a child, okay? And they went on this website called Longing for a Child. Now, in the Netherlands, there is a 25 people limit that a sperm donor could donate to, inseminate, whichever whichever term you want to use, okay? So, um, one of the single moms who had a child with him found out that there was five other um five other couples five other people just in her town that had a child with jonathan so in 2017 okay um there was an article published but dutch media privacy laws do not allow the person's name you know to be mentioned in the article so there was this article published and it just said you know that there was a dutch man being investigated for possibly having 650 children okay now the women you know that decided to be inseminated by jonathan they all say in the documentary that they saw red flags in the beginning okay i mean in the beginning jonathan was so helpful he wanted to, you know, help people out and go above and beyond. So Jonathan was so helpful that he would come to your house, okay? Go in your bathroom, do his business, hand you the cup. You know, one of the couples that used him for donation was a married couple. Um, Joyce, and I can't remember her husband's name right now. He said he felt so weird sitting on his couch while Jonathan was upstairs doing his thing, okay? He said it just felt so weird to him, and he was just like, okay, but this is what has to be done. I want to have a child. So they let Jonathan jerk off in their bathroom to get the thing, you know, to get the mission accomplished, okay? So by the way, Jonathan refuses comment okay Re refuse to comment for this documentary refuse okay. to you know do anything talk to the producers so i'm gonna get into this in a minute he's very upset about it and he is using his youtube channel to try to debunk 
what was said on this documentary. So at this point, there's about 700, 800 children, okay? And the couples who have formed a Facebook group at this point are worried about the possibility of incest amongst the children. Because when half siblings meet and they don't know that they're half siblings and they feel this connection between them, they could fall in love. And before you know it, there's this possibility of incest. And Jonathan, honestly, he couldn't care less, okay? So there was a Australian couple named Laura and Kate, okay? So after his um, donation limit was maxed out in the Netherlands, he headed to Australia, okay? So Kate and Laura were searching for a sperm donor, and they used um, Cyros, which is one of the biggest international sperm donor sites, okay? And you go on the site, just like the Dutch one, longing for a child, and there is a bunch of um, profiles where you click on, check out, you know, um, the sperm donor's profile, uh, what they, you know, what they say they look like, their interests, etc. Okay, so um, the couple in the Netherlands, um, Suzanne and Natalie, when they first used the longing for a child site, okay, you guys follow me here. Natalie first picked this dude, okay? She decided to meet up with him. And when she met up with him, she decided that her first pick was not for her, okay? She said that this dude basically was kind of creepy looking, had no personality, had a huge scar on the back of his head. He was completely bald. I mean, she was just like, okay, you're not my choice. And then she met Jacob. I'm sorry, he was Jonathan, but he was calling himself Jacob, okay? And Jonathan was everything that her and her wife were looking for. He was good looking, he was tall, he was smart, he was polite, he was nice. So that's why they chose Jonathan, okay? Now, after he maxed out in the Netherlands, he headed to Australia. And in Australia, we have Laura and Kate, okay? And they're on this Cyros website, which is the one of the largest um, sperm donor sites in the world. And they settle on Rudd, okay? And this Cairo site will let you check if a certain sperm donor has reached their max limit, okay? So um, he hadn't reached his max limit in Australia, according to the site. And Laura and Kate decided not only they were having one child with him, they were going to have two children. And um, two women who speak on their experiences with Jonathan in this documentary have two children with him, okay? So um, Rudd turned out, turned out to be Jonathan, was also a serial donor in Australia. By the way, do not call Jonathan a serial anything. He doesn't like the word serial. He says it, you know, the connotation is like a, a serial killer. So do not call him a serial sperm donor. He does not like that, that term. And do not say that he is addicted to sperm donation. He doesn't like the term um, addiction. Okay, he says that is a negative connotation. Um, it brings, you know, drug addiction to someone's mind. And no, so do not use the word addicted either when you're talking about Jonathan. Okay, so um, one of his recipients in the Netherlands kept asking him, Jonathan, how many children do you actually have? And it started off with 50-ish, maybe 150-ish, maybe around 250. Not really sure, not really sure. So at this point, all of these 
mothers, these recipients are talking to each other in a Facebook group, okay? Laura and Kate decided to get this woman involved. Her name is Eve Wiley. Now, Eve, unfortunately, is all too familiar with what she calls fertility fraud. Eve um, found out that who she thought was her mother's sperm donor, donor 106, and that she formed a relationship with this person when she turned 18. Well, guess what? He wasn't her biological father. Her mother's fertility doctor was actually her biological father, along with a bunch of other people, okay? So it turns out that her mom was a victim of fertility fraud, okay? Her mom thought one donor was, you know, her daughter's biological father, and it turned out, no, 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 it was her doctor. So Eve is an advocate for fertility fraud, okay? And she was going full balls to the wall, helping the Australian couple, helping the woman in the Netherlands, okay? She wanted to make sure that Jonathan was held accountable, okay? So they decided that the best way to do this was to take him to court, okay? And to have a court rule, Jonathan, you cannot jack off and donate sperm anymore. The number of kids you have is totally ridiculous, okay? Now, we move on to another woman named Patricia, okay? Now, Patricia apparently was very close to Jonathan and also very close to Leon. Who is Leon, you may ask? Leon is the first sperm donor that the woman from the Netherlands Netherlands met with that had the big scar on the back of his head that was kind of weird yeah well Leon and Jonathan are the only donors on the site longing for a kid yes okay there's like 30 names and pictures etc but they all are either Leon or Jonathan okay so now Stephanie, I'm sorry, Patricia knows both Jonathan and Leon personally, okay? First, she was going to try to have a child with Jonathan, but things didn't work out. Then her and Leon became good friends, and Leon, you know, was trying to help her have a child. Okay, she says that Leon told her that Jonathan and Leon do this strange sperm Russian roulette type of game where they would meet in the parking lot, okay, mix their sperm samples, and then um, Jonathan would deliver it to the recipient that was waiting for him. So the recipient that thought that she was getting purely Jonathan's sperm and purely his DNA, well, allegedly, according to Patricia, and by the way, Jonathan denies this left and right. I'm going to get into that in a minute, okay? Patricia says that Leon told her that they would just play this game of sperm Russian roulette. Now, this freaked out so many of the parents, okay, that the married couple, Joyce and her husband, had both of their children's DNA tested, okay, because they were so freaked the fuck out. They were like, oh, my God, if Jonathan is not my child's biological father like i thought he is that who the fuck is the biological father they said the two weeks that they were waiting for the test results to come back was like fucking torture but jonathan is the biological father of both of their children okay so patricia says that jonathan sees all of the sperm doning as um producing a bunch of mini me's Okay, he has this godlike complex that he sees nothing wrong with what he's doing. Okay, he's actually sees it as some type of charity work, and he is just spreading his seed all over the world. Okay, and this is just charity, he's just helping. There is nothing wrong with what he's doing. Okay, so, um, 
There is no national limit, unfortunately, to sperm donation, okay? But Eve Wiley and an attorney, okay, got their case together and um, he was taken to court. Jonathan was taken to court in the Netherlands, okay? And to make a long story short, the judge in the Netherlands told him, listen, you are not to donate sperm or you are going to get fined a hundred, what is it? A hundred and eight thousand dollars per uh, per donation. Okay. Now I want to get into this Kenya sperm donation ring. Okay. That is apparently going on. Apparently sperm is needed in Kenya big time. Okay. And they are willing to provide you with an all expenses paid trip. Okay. You have your, um, expenses paid hotel round trip flight, everything you could imagine for an all inclusive trip to Kenya. But the catch is you have to donate. Okay. A certain amount of times. And one of the administrators of this Facebook group that Kyle is also a member of, okay, said that he, you know, went to Kenya and he donated 500 times. So if Jonathan wasn't supposed to be donating sperm, okay, what is he doing in this Kenya, in this Facebook group for sperm donors, okay? And as you can see here, he, you know, his um, username was the Kenyan lion or something like that. And Kyle's like, oh, praise the lion. Okay. Now the moms say that they were pretty sure that this person was Jonathan because Jonathan is obsessed with lions. And it's such a coinky dink, okay, that a third or a fourth moderator was added to the sperm donor group and they just happen you know have the username of lion monsafa or something like that okay now when they were taking him to court they needed hard evidence that he was still donating okay so one of his recipients who was so disgusted about what was going on decided to set up a trap and guess what? The trap worked. Okay. She um, set up a profile, contacted him, sent him some pretty pictures from Google of a sexy chick. Once Jonathan saw the ass on this chick, okay, he, he forget it. All common sense went out the window. Like the woman says, he was thinking with his pinky and not the one on his finger. Okay. And he, you know, was like, oh, I'm dying to meet you. And yes, I'm willing to donate sperm for you to have a child. Bingo, he was busted. Bingo, he was busted. And that was all the evidence that they needed. Now, in court, okay, Jonathan looked the judge straight in the face and basically told the judge that he saw no problem with what he was doing. Okay, that um, he has 600 children out there and he is involved in their lives. And, you know, he really sees no problem with it. And the judge is like, are you kidding me? There is no way it, that it's humanly possible that you will be able to go to 600 birthday parties, 600 graduations. You know, like there is no way that you could be personally involved in all of these children's lives. And the judge didn't say this, but I bet you she was thinking, this is an ego trip for you, okay? And you need to stop the shit. Now, there are hot spots in the world, apparently, for sperm donation. Not only Kenya is a hot spot. Brazil, certain parts of Asia, they really want, you know, men to come. And as one of the sperm donators said, he was being milked like a cow. Okay, now, he uses his YouTube channel, as you can see here, 
okay and the women say that he uses his youtube channel because he has this need to be you know worshipped and 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 you know admired and worshipped and so he's not really happy with this netflix documentary and um first he started off with his opinions about the trailer and he basically laughed his way to the trailer said everyone was lying and um just a typical narcissistic attitude now tell you guys the truth watching this documentary i was getting a flashback of all of the research that i did with kyle another serial sperm donor who sees nothing wrong with what he's doing so first jonathan is really pissed off about um the trailer then he says that um okay that he watched part one of the documentary and of course everyone is lying they're all full of shit and um i'm not doing anything wrong i'm just helping these women out and by the way i haven't donated sperm since 2017. do you guys want to know why i haven't donated sperm since 2017. so this article as you can see says that he wasn't happy with the Netflix doc. And he says that Patricia lied about him and Leon mixing sperm. And he is really, really pissed off about this, okay? Like, you don't say he's a serial donor. Do not say that he is addicted to, um, to sperm donation. And do not say that him and Leon mix, mix their sperm. No way, okay? He was really pissed off. And he said that Patricia lied. Now, the interesting thing about this is there is a live stream, okay, apparently, um, that was done four days ago by the Down the Rabbit Hole News YouTube channel. And as you see here, we have the content creator, Patricia and Jonathan, okay? Apparently, Jonathan confronts Patricia, um, during this live stream and patricia says that it wasn't leon that told her that it was another serial sperm donor that told her whatever the case may be i wouldn't be surprised if there was some disgusting icky shady shit going on but um jonathan uh confronted patricia during this live stream and honestly in my opinion you know, I think Patricia, for some reason, still wants to have Jonathan in her life. She wasn't very confrontational with him during the live stream. She was just kind of like, you know, being very meek and, and um, you know, I, I don't want to say passive aggressive, but hey, if I had the man on a live stream that was calling me a liar, that was saying this and saying that, and I knew what I told wasn't a lie, I wouldn't be sitting back being all passive aggressive and, and I would definitely confront him. I mean, this was the perfect time and the perfect place to confront him on a live stream. But my opinion from watching this documentary is, um, unfortunately, there is a group of guys who think that this is something cool to do, okay? And yes, I agree. They feel like they have a God-like complex, okay? It gives them a rush, in my opinion. And yes, I do think that they are addicted to doing this because it gives them a rush, a sense of being powerful, okay? So um, we have good old Jonathan from the Netherlands. Then we have Joe Donor, who was also in that Facebook group from the UK, who uh, sent me a message because he wanted to speak on the behalf of his friend Kyle. Then we have um, Adam Adam Hooper, okay, from Australia, who is another serial donor and runs a private um, a private donation website. Familiar, uh, kind of similar to Sios, 
and um, longing for a child, okay? So there is, you know, a bunch of men out there, Jonathan, Kyle, Adam, I mean, you know, Joe Donor, you see here, Kyle has his own website, Be Pregnant Not Now by Kyle Gordy. These men take advantage of women like Jen, one of Kyle's recipients that I interviewed. If you haven't checked out the interview, please do. They take advantage of women and couples who are desperately, desperately wanting a child. And in their desperation, they ignore the red flags that are slapping them in the face, okay? And uh, these men take advantage. Plain and simple, in my honest opinion, they just take advantage and it's disgusting, okay? If you haven't checked out my interview with Jen, please do. And this video is probably going to get me a defamation strike. I'm sure one of the men that I mentioned in this video will be crying and whining to YouTube that I am defaming them. Just like Jonathan is whining that Netflix is slandering him. Hey, Jonathan... In my honest opinion, you could have just spoken to the Netflix doc people and gotten your own story out. And this way, there would have been two sides of the story. But instead, you choose to whine and cry on your YouTube channel. So that's my opinion about this doc. Okay. Unfortunately, there's men out there, sick, disgusting men who take advantage of women who are vulnerable, desperate to have a child, and unfortunately can't see the red flag slapping them in the face. This is on Netflix, guys. Okay. It's called The Man with 1000 Kids. You should check it out. It's really interesting. And don't let Kyle Gordy fool you. Okay. Unlike what he's saying on Reddit, he's mentioned for about five minutes in the third episode, 10 minutes tops, okay? This whole documentary is not about him, but it is really interesting. So check it out if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching me, guys. Please subscribe if you don't already. Hit that like button. Please um, share my video with a friend or 10, and please consider joining my membership. There's a join button on my banner and in my description box. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye, everyone.